So I do direct this Harvard study of adult development. It's, as far as we know, the longest study of the same people that's ever been done following people since 1938 from adolescence all the way through old age and now following all their children, thousands of lives. And we began to find about 30 years ago this startling connection between warm relationships and how good our lives feel to us our well-being, and also the fact that warm relationships seemed to keep people both physically stronger and kept their brains. But then the question is, how could this work? How do relationships shape our happiness and our physical health? Well, one of the best theories for which there's now some pretty good evidence is based on the idea of stress. That As we know, stress is an inevitable part of all of our lives. Stress happens to us every day. And what we find is that good relationships turn out to be stress regulators. So let me give you an example. Let's say that I have something upsetting happen to me during the day. And I find myself like ruminating about it and really thinking about it and unhappy I can feel my body go into what we call fight or flight response, where literally my heart rate goes up and I might start sweating a little bit and I'm just not feeling as well. Now, what we're meant to do is to come back to equilibrium when a stressor goes away. That's the way the body is supposed to work. But what happens if I go home at the end of my upsetting day And I have somebody to talk to, stress regulators that we get from good relationships, and that we stay in chronic fight or flight mode, that our bodies have this chronic stress, chronic levels of inflammation and circulating stress hormones that wear away our happiness and break down different body systems. Well, what kinds of relationships seem 